and welcome back. And of course, we continue with our focus on just having a look at some of the first time contestants to the National Assembly uh, vote for this year. And of course, we've got 42 days to go before the elections. And with 27.79 million registered voters to elect candidates to represent them in the National Assembly and the provincial legislatures, what are the smaller opposition parties doing to get their share of the vote? Now, as we get closer to the national and provincial election scheduled for the 29th of May this year, we continue to look at the role that smaller political parties play or will play in this year's elections. So to discuss this morning their manifestos, we have, of course, Action SA, the Patriotic Alliance, and we also have uh, Conservatives in uh, Action SA. And I'll introduce uh, the uh, gentleman to you in just a little bit. But first, I quickly want to run through, as we've been doing all week, what some of their priorities are as outlined in a manifesto. So starting with uh, priorities for Action SA, and let's take a look there. Action SA say they are going to look at economic growth that creates job opportunities, a sustainable energy system that ends load shedding, quality education for all, a fair approach to immigration and establishing law and order that upholds a just society. Then uh, moving on to the Patriotic Alliance. So for them, it's all about the return of the death penalty, zero tolerance for illegal immigration to elevate royal and local leaders, uh, military service and also putting God first. And then we move on uh, to um, the priorities for Conservatives in Action SA. And let's take a look there nation building, family values, national reconciliation, strong conservative values and property rights, some of the key issues that the three parties will look at. But of course, we're going to get into that now. So as we move across and we try not to trip here behind Leanne. <laughs> and uh, joining me this morning for the discussion from Action SA is, of course, uh, Mr. Michael Beaumont. And we have Mr. Samuel Kennedy uh, from uh, the um, Conservatives in Action SA and from Patriotic Alliance, Mr. Kenny Kunene. Gentlemen, thanks for coming. Welcome. Thank you. It's great, great to be here with you in studio. All right. Let's kick it off. Let me start with you, Mr. Kennedy. Conservatives in Action SA. Talk to us about your party, what you stand for, and what it is that you hope the South African electoral will actually gravitate to because of your party. I think uh, from, from where we're sitting, um, the, the primary object is, is, is the, the country as a nation is fractured. It's fractured socially, it's fractured economically, um, and it's fractured in the sense that a lot of, I would say the bulk of South Africans are battling to put food on the table. So, so those are issues that we've seen over 30 years where better life was promised. We all know a better life was promised. And every epoch or every election timetable we're basically going through the same repetitive empty promises same rationale same rhetoric same narrative we can do this we can do that and I think South Africans are looking for something different because they've seen it all we've seen a 2021 election uh, my colleagues on the left and right have participated, they're in government, in local government. And, and what's changed? To be honest, zero. So, so something is not right. There's what we call in English a dysfunctionality, and it's extremely evident. And this is a chance for voters to say, how do we correct the wrongs? And something needs to happen. Now, there's no hard and fast rule that, that a big party has the ability. Everything comes down to ultimately the individuals that are in parliament, obviously guided by party policy positions. And we're saying, as the, as the, as the conservatives in action, I know the, 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 there's this misnomer, it's a nice word, where people say, ah, oh, but you're the CIA. Indeed we are, uh, but of South Africa. And our emphasis on 
we're conservative. What is conservatism? It's, it's the understanding that we all live on the basis of, or we're guided by values. Mm. Uh, one of our strong values, strong values, is, is that the, the, the political discourse at the moment is very geared towards majoritarianism. We say, what about minorities? So, so one of our found foundational principles is the protection of minority rights. Two, where we oppose some of our colleagues is we don't believe in land expropriation without compensation. We firm believers in the principle of protection of property rights. The redress is another matter on its own as to how property was acquired uh, pre-94 and so forth. But in order to come in and say we want <coughs> land expropriation, that defeats the object because who determines truth? Okay. Thirdly and, and finally, what are family values and what are conservative values? Conservative values are as long as we believe as human beings that our life on this earth is a journey, we all believe, whether Islamic, whether Hindu, whether Conf uh, Confucius, uh, whether Christian, we all have that belief that we, 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 we believe in the supreme being. That's a conservative value. Okay. So, so the perception out there that conservatives are anti this, anti that's nonsense. But lastly, let me say, we don't subscribe to the notion of socialism, neither do we subscribe to the notion of communist Marxist ideology. We believe in a free market, but a regulated market. In this country at the moment, big business is driving this country into the ground. Small business and medium business are taking huge strain and there are absolutely no interventions for small and medium business. Okay, Kenny Kunene, uh, which part of the 27 million are you targeting? <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Sakina, for having us. Sakina, we are targeting all South Africans, all races. The basic foundation of Patriotic Alliance was based on a quote by Amilcar Cabral. He says that we must bear in mind that the people are not fighting for ideas in anyone's mind or in anyone's head. The people are fighting to gain material benefits. They are fighting to live a better life and to guarantee a better future for their children. That is the foundation of Patriotic Alliance. And that is why our name defines who we are. A patriot is someone who loves his country and his people. So we are a union, an alliance, a get together of people who love South Africa. Hence, we put South Africans first. And we are very practical in our approach to dealing with the issues that are facing South Africa. Um, <clears throat> Christianity enjoys 87%, if not more, of support in this country. In 1994, our country was turned into a secular state without consultation with the majority of this country. And uh, religious education was taken out of public uh, schools. So God was taken out of public schools. God was taken out of uh, uh, public institutions. And as the PA, we believe that putting God first and bringing God back into schools will bring back the values that you and I uh, got to know when we went to primary and high school where religious education was taught. We knew that we, you need to respect your mother and father so that your days may be numbered. Mm. Our children today don't know that. We see how uh, teachers are disrespected, how teachers are being insulted, even at primary school level, because the, there are no foundational values uh, for our children. Uh, <clears throat> number two, um, <clears throat> We believe, we believe that national service is very essential, especially in this country that has got a high level of unemployment. If our children finish school or they don't finish school, as God has given us different talents, they need to go for military service. When they are at the military service, that's where their skills that God has given them will then be enhanced. Uh, they will learn all these skills that they have, whether it's plumbing, whether it's carpentry, whether it's uh, 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 um, building. 
and they will also train mm. on how to defend their country so that when they are done with that program, they decide whether they want to stay in the military or whether they want to go back and establish their own businesses or be employed. But they will be paid whilst they are going through this training. So that mitigates the issue of unemployment and crime. That mitigates the issue of we take our children out of the corners and we go and train them. You, you must look at a white person who is a medical doctor. They, they would be fixing their own electrical issues at their houses. They would be fixing their own cars. And you'd ask them, where did you get uh, this knowledge? And they will say at the military. But the military also teaches discipline. Mm. But do you have to go to the military to learn that necessarily? No, 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 no. Yes, you have to. Our country is facing a difficult uh, social, social problems. And for us to address them, we need to broaden our scope. The okay. military is not the only way to fight um, unemployment. Uh, Sakina, you, you would appreciate that uh, the current government does not maintain any infrastructure because mm. there's no stealing in, in maintenance. They build clinics, they build libraries, they build police stations. Six months down the line, the grass has grown. There's no maintenance. Okay. Our roads are not being maintained. As the MMC of roads and transport in the city I'm gonna of come to that. I can, I can testify to that. We'll come to those issues. Michael Beaumont, Action SA. Well, I mean, Action SA is a party that's growing rapidly in all nine provinces and a party that occupies the abandoned political center of South Africa, where all the other parties have left the majority of South Africans feeling politically homeless. From our point of view, we put forward what we believe to be an offer that speaks to the majority of South Africans. And that offer is predicated upon growing our economy and creating jobs through massive investment in infrastructure, through real support for small business, uh, particularly in interest-free loans for small business, uh, economic justice in the form of the only real alternative we believe has been put forward to the failed policy of BEE. We believe fundamentally that the empowerment of black South Africans is essential to deal with our unjust history. But BEE as a policy needs to be replaced by inclusive economic empowerment that provides grassroots level empowerment in a way that BEE has never because of the need to access capital and political connections in BEE. We have put forward a solution regarding how we will deal with our energy crisis in South Africa. Our energy crisis began in 2007, and the fact that it persists 17 years later is a travesty for the South African people. The solutions are there. There are many countries who have dealt with energy crisis in the, in the world, and we need to just follow those basic steps to ensure that we can provide that stable foundation for our economy. We occupy what we regard to be the middle ground on immigration to our left, are parties that call you a xenophobe just because you want to talk about the fact that South Africa has borders and we have the right to determine how people come and go through our borders. Uh, and on the other side are people who act like quasi-law enforcement agencies, raiding businesses, etc. And I think we occupy... Who are you talking about? Kenny's party? I'm not talking about other parties. I'm talking about Action SA. We maintain the middle ground on that particular issue and in such a way where we can ensure we protect against the outbreak of xenophobic violence, which is a real threat in South Africa, while at the same time ensuring that we can enforce our immigration laws of this country and be a sovereign country in that particular regard. I think also from a crime and a rule of law point of view, we're very strong in the fact that there has to be a rule of law in South Africa. Uh, from our point of view, we believe the conversation has to be more about the rights of law-abiding citizens than the rights of criminals. In that particular regard, we believe in the building of more prisons. Uh, we believe that a change in the laws is required so that life means life and we throw away the key so that people cannot come out of prison and hurt law-abiding South Africans again just because our prison system is too full. And most importantly, this all has to be brought together by a capable state because all of the promises that politicians make in a campaign are meaningless, even with all the political will in the world unless we're going to have leadership that puts the right people in the right place to do the right job. And there you need to talk about a meritorious system of appointing a civil service that is independent and can be immunized against any political instability that may take place at a political level. 
All right, there you have the opening salvos from the three parties uh, represented here this morning. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to get into some of the points uh, that have been raised here more discursively. So do stay with us. And of course, send us your questions as well. But let's take a quick break. Right, uh, welcome back. And of course, we continue here on Morning Live uh, for all of this week where we speak to some of the new entrants to the um, elections, the general elections in the country, because uh, some of the parties have already contested at the local government uh, phase of elections. But this is, of course, a general election. So uh, speaking to us this morning, we have uh, Kenny Kunene from the Patriotic Alliance. Uh, Samuel H. Kennedy is with the Conservatives in Action. He's the president there. And of course, Michael Bowman is from Action SA. So, Michael, you touched on the BEE yes. situation. So, talk to us about why you would abolish that very briefly. Well, I think we must be clear about the principle. We are 100% behind the principle that black South Africans need to be empowered. And by black South Africans, we refer to all the racial categories of South Africans who were discriminated against in our past. Because at the end of the day, the injustice of our, of our history persists in our society and particularly in our economy today. Being colorblind is not going to solve that problem. Uh, and just trying to think that trickle-down economics is going to solve that problem is not going to work either. So from that point of view, we believe it's the BEE Act of 2003 that has failed. And the evidence of that is all around us. Uh, and instead of being like so many political parties that say it's failed and it must go, we are putting forward an alternative. We put forward the alternative of inclusive economic empowerment. It focuses at a grassroots level. And central to inclusive economic empowerment is what we call the Opportunity Fund. It is a fund that will be levied through a tax of 5% to businesses in South Africa. We do so because in repealing BE legislation, you remove the 4 to 6% BE compliance costs that currently exist for those businesses. So it doesn't change that particular what, bottom line. What about the question of redress for well, injustices of the past? Well, that, that's exactly what the fund is designed to do. So that fund is then used to disperse education opportunities for to who? South Africans, for people as historically disadvantaged people, and people who uh, clearly are from an income class that requires that kind of assistance. So let's be clear, Herman Mashaba's children don't need the Opportunity Fund. They are fine on their own. Uh, we don't want to see polit children or politicians enriched over and over again. We want to see it happen at a grassroots level where it hasn't happened to date. Okay. And this fund needs to dispense resources to create bursaries and education opportunities, to build more universities and colleges, to give more people a pathway after they leave school, and to ensure that we can offer interest-free loans to small businesses to get them off the ground and become employers of South Africans. Samuel Kennedy, your view yes, on that? Yes, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I, I, think, I think, and I like this expression, it's called misnomer. And a misnomer is, is, is when people assume they have the answer and have actually missed the mark. Uh, there's a Greek word for it, it's called hamashia, when you miss the mark. Triple BE is a constitutional prescript or precept. And it cannot be changed by political whim. Political whim. Every political party has a view or an opinion. However, in order to change the Triple B Act, you have to start with the Constitution. And in order to change the Constitution, because it's a prescript, in order to change a Constitution, you need 66 plus one. And it's not gonna happen, not in this country, because it's getting more fragmented. In other words, more political parties are coming in, multi-party, uh, South Africa is geared up towards a multi-party system, so coalitions are now gonna be the order of the day. However, and as Michael says, it, it, the issue is not the system or the, it might be the wording on the act, but it's not the principle. It's not the principle. The principle is, or the real issue is, implementation. And I'll give you an example. This government, established a triple BE commission. And guess what the object or the scope of that commission is? Fronting. It's not regulatory. It has no teeth. Its only scope is fronting. What about all the other issues? Our problem in this country is that big white business 
dominated by white males, drive an anti-transformation agenda, and it needs to change. And the ANC, with no disrespect, have treated this matter with kid gloves because they don't know how to deal with the issue of economic flight because of, of taxation. We need a government that's going to be bold <coughs> and say, these are the criteria for the next administration, the seventh administration, and that is what needs to be achieved for, and Michael used the word historically uh, uh, disadvantaged. It's not historically disadvantaged. It's black people defined constitutionally as colored, Indian, and African. Black people must have redress in order to deal with the economic suffering of our people. That's the fundamental issue. Kenny? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> look, for, for us as the PA, uh, the minerals of South Africa must be shared amongst all citizens in South Africa. The same way Norway is doing it. Norway has got oil and there is no uh, certain group that is being empowered. Uh, the, the, the principle of BEE was an indoctrination on black people to depend on the few white businesses. The mindset of our people now is 30%. The mindset of our people is, if I can just get a quotation, it is because of this BEE mindset um, to, 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 to deal with the issue of empowerment. We need to encourage companies to, to support, to use SMMEs. In developed worlds, the SMMEs account for a big chunk of tax revenue. In this country, 10% of the big companies that are owned by uh, a few families account for 86% of turnover. And here, SMMEs only account for 20 to 25% of contribution to, to tax. And the rest of the SMMEs are not. So we need to develop SMMEs. When you empower people, and I'll make an example with the president of this country, what company has he built? He has been given. He has been ushered shares, and he has not developed any business. But when you empower SMMEs, you are empowering people who want to be entrepreneurs. You are growing them. SMMEs uh, create more jobs. SMMEs are able to support more families. So if we, we, we treat empowerment of our people like in developed countries where we are able to develop as many SMMEs as possible. The construction, the construction industry, it's a very big industry and our people are playing black people and I, I include blacks and colors. Colors are Africans, so I would not say uh, blacks are Africans and colors mm -hmm. are not Africans. Colors are Africans. So if, if, if we include companies in the bigger role in construction, which is the infrastructure uh, development of our country, we are going to see more empowerment happening. But as things stand, and you would have seen that collusion has happened in the construction industry, construction plays a major role in economic uh, uh, stimulation. Mm. So, uh, yes, you need to have a fund, but that fund can come out of the minerals, that fund can come out of uh, taxation of 2% or 1%. We believe that if you tax 1%, that fund can then go towards the redress of okay. what has happened. But we must also not forget that we need to, uh, to, 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 to reclaim our gold that is in England. Okay. We need to also go for reparations uh, from England. England must pay South Africans for having colonized them and for the gold and diamond that they have stolen from this country. It must come back because our gold is strengthening the pound as the strongest currency okay. in the world. I'm going to come back to the reparations issue and um, uh, Samuel will have a chance to do that. But let's quickly take a look here. Nkosikona um, Matera, this one's for you, um, uh, says... My question goes to uh, Mr. Mashaba, so that would be pay, uh, Action SA. Uh, there is a lot of illegal immigrants in South Africa and illegal mining. Um, what will they do about it if we elect them to power and the issue of high crime and corruption? Sure, it's a very wide set of topics, but let's do the best we can. 
I think these things largely speak to the same problem, and that's the lawlessness that has developed in our South African society. A part of that problem has emerged when our borders are, are meant to mean that we are a sovereign country, and our borders in real terms are actually just lines on a map right now. As a country, we have every right to determine how people and goods enter and leave. Uh, every country in the world does it. It's not a controversial thing to say. Uh, and the fact that we don't means South Africa is very vulnerable. Uh, in many ways, there are people who come to this country who qualify for asylum, and they are not getting the paperwork, and they are vulnerable to the worst forms of abuse. But there are also people who come to our country who break our laws, uh, who our police don't know how to deal with them, uh, and they continue to operate with impunity because of a justice system that doesn't know how to deal with them. From an illegal mining point of view, this is a massive problem, and it speaks to law enforcement that doesn't appear to have the answers. If you speak to communities who live around these areas of illegal mining, they'll tell you the police live in fear. Okay, but, but what, 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 just before that, what, what is your solution as Action SA to that, to the lawlessness problem? The problem that we face right now in less than a minute, how would you attack it? How would you fix this problem? Well, it's got to start with the capacity of our police. Our police are completely undercapacitated. We don't have enough warm bodies on the ground. They are not sufficiently equipped with weapons and vehicles and protective gear. They are not uh, placed in enough communities to provide that protection and their response times are inadequate. But also we need to bring in the military to provide assistance with what we call these kind of forms of economic sabotage taking place in South Africa so that our police are emboldened uh, by that kind of military presence to deal with these challenges. Let's okay. call it what it is. Those people who are running criminal syndicates around illegal mining, etc., these are highly armed criminal syndicates and we actually need the military to address those kind of challenges. All right. Can I contribute there? We will, as the PA, we know where the illegal miners are. These are criminals who are in our country illegally committing crime by illegally mining. We will go in. If they shoot back, the instruction will be one. Shoot back. If they have too much firepower, hoi hand grenades, deal with them like they are rats that they are. Arrest those who, 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 who surrender and uh, deport them. We will must deport each and every illegal immigrant, whether they are underground mining, whether they are in the tax shops, whether they are in the in the factories, whether they are in the streets, whether they are they have hijacked buildings. We will must deport all illegal immigrants, but, and that will solve all these questions that are being asked. And you will do this as the state, as, as a state, government. Yes, as okay. a state, you must fight fire with fire. Okay. It, it's, um, a, it's, it's an inter Samuel? it's an interesting observation. Because South Africa is a constitutional republic governed by the constitution of the republic, which is sacrosanct. Sacrosanct meaning it's unenviable, cannot be erased, correct? Now, now one of the things that, that the nation, remember, it's the nation that elected the ANC government. They didn't appear on their own. They got 66%, 65%, 62% until Jacob Zuma, they got up to 59 or 58 percent under Cyril, somewhere thereabouts. So it's the nation, South Africans, that elected this government. We're now talking about the dynamics of why the government should be changed. Now, now part of the Constitution is related to death penalty. Death penalty is anathema. Okay. It's anathema. It's not even a debate. You can throw grenades, you can do whatever you like, you can put the military in, whatever you like. The fact of the matter is we need to capacitate the South African state, not, not the ANC, because the ANC is the governing party. The state are the people who run South Africa. Okay. Go and tell six girls that were raped by illegal immigrants in Krukastop, in, in Calitonville, that the Constitution protects criminals. Go and tell those girls who did not get justice. Mm. The okay. case was thrown out of court. So if the Constitution cannot protect our people, we must fight fire with fire to protect South Africans. The MMC of public safety went underground All right. to go and fight illegal immigrants. They shot back at JMPD officers. What do you do with a criminal that shoots at you? You shoot back.
All right, let's move on to another agree, question. Uh, this one is from Ubawaka Tintualo, says, uh, please ask them uh, if there's anything different or extraordinary that they will come up with besides the ones that uh, came with the ruling party or they'll be there to fill their own pockets for the next five years, um, conservatives. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to answer that. Uh, first, firstly, I share Kenny's sentiment. Uh, gender, Gender-based violence or woman abuse and child abuse is a very critical issue. We don't subscribe to that. But, but, but we need to, we need, we, we. So when we get into government, we'll be a coalition. I'm not saying I'm predetermining, but I'm saying that con collective must take the requisite, responsible, appropriate actions to deal with the issues that are being raised by ordinary people, right? What do we want to do, for example? People are suffering. We've got to get food prices down. You can have an opportunity fund. It's not going to do anything. We've got to deal with the people who are making mass profits out of ordinary black and ordinary white South Africans. That's where we need to start. Two, we've got to deal with the issue of fuel. This government is taxing us. And they use a nice little word called fuel levy. It's not fuel levy, it's tax. And the second thing we need to do and this is a critical issue. Our people don't have access to finance. And when I talk about finance, not business finance, access to finance through banks. We've got to come up with, and one of the first things we've got to do at Sakina is this government, a lot of people don't know it, this government put in a policy called inflation targeting. They started this policy in the year 2000. And the reason why this economy is not growing is because this government put in what they call a credit score. We try to emulate people in the West. We're not the West, we are a developing nation. We got to have what we call a fit for use. Create a system that actually takes into cognizance our people instead of coming with the West or with Chinese ideology. We've got to make our own ideology. Okay, and Tantam Charlie, uh, this one's for uh, Kenny, says, uh, my ask goes to uh, the PA, why are they mostly campaigning in colored areas? Secondly, how are they planning to diversify going forward in terms of attracting different races? The PA is a colorful party. Uh, the colored agenda has not been around the political table. Um, if you look at black parties, they find their constituencies in the black communities. You look at white parties, they find their constituencies in the white communities, but they also get voted by other races. The PA found its constituency in the colored community, and we have brought the agenda of colored people on the table. I am not colored, I am black, uh, but I am the founder, co-founder of the PA. Um, we, have, we are the only party that has got in its leaks the Royal, the Patriotic Royal Affairs Alliance, which is, which involves royal leaders in this country, both Kwesan, Zulu, Pedi, Venda, Soto, they are part of us. We are campaigning in the black communities. Maybe we have not been able to reach uh, 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 townships or areas, but we are strong in the uh, black communities. We are growing in the black communities. We've got councillors in Kiani from 2021. We've got councillors in Newcastle. We've got councillors in uh, Peter Mandesbeck. Uh, we've got councillors in the black communities that are representing the Patriotic Alliance. So we, we, we are in the black communities. Where we have not reached, we are coming. We are playing the long game. We are a party that is uniting black colored white Indian together as patriots, as people who love this country. All right. We need to take a quick break and then we'll be back here on Morning Live and taking more of your questions, asking about some of the pertinent issues to our elected representatives here this morning. So do stay with us. Oh, welcome back. Third installment of discussions with uh, some of the new entrants uh, who will be vying for your vote on May the 29th. And in conversation this morning uh, with uh, Kenny Gunene from the Patriotic Alliance, we have uh, Samuel Kennedy from Conservatives in Action SA and Michael Beaumont from Action SA. So 
we've got about uh, five minutes left. So uh, let's quickly look at coalitions going into this government, given that that seems to be how things are stacking up. So as Action SA, you have two colleagues here. Would you have any qualms going into coalitions with them? Or are there any specific parties that Action SA will not get into a coalition with? Yes, yeah, certainly. And I think we are quite clear. We will not go into coalition or have working relationships with the ANC or the EFF. Uh, we say that not because we have problems with the supporters of those parties or the parties in general. We have problems with the leaders of those parties. From our point of view, this election is a referendum on change. Anyone who aligns around the ANC is representing a continuation of the status quo. We need political parties to align on the so-called other side of the aisle around change. And we are very open-minded to work with the broadest number of political parties possible around change because effectively the South African people are going to remove for the very first time the majority of the ANC nationally and in a number of provinces in this election. From our point of view, it is a betrayal of the campaigns that political parties are persecuting to go on the ground and to say we're going to campaign for change and then to go and give those votes for a continuation of the very situation from which you said we needed change. Action SA has formed part of this multi-party charter. We do so not because we love those parties or that they love us. Uh, we actually have many differences. But we've entered an era where you have to demonstrate that you are willing to put aside differences and work with other political parties for the good of South Africans. And mm -hmm. that's the philosophy that So just very briefly, so when you hear rumbles that there may be uh, could be possibly some sort of tunadrang between the ANC and the DA as the multi uh, multi-charter uh, pact. How does that sit with you? Well, it's very frustrating because we've signed a coalition agreement as a group of parties that says we will not entertain any working relationship with the ANC. So to hear that that may be taking place is obviously of deep concern. But at the end of the day, we put it this way. We did not join the multi-party charter for another political party. We did so for South Africans. Our commitment to South Africans for change does not move one inch because another political party's commitment might be moving. The South African people must hold them to account at the ballot <clears throat> box, and we are convinced that they will. Samuel Kennedy. Thank you. Uh, coalition governments, it's actually a nice word. Um, our principle, our principle is, is that we, we're patriotic in nature. We all carry the same ID, we all live in the same country, we all breathe the same air. The challenges we have is that as soon as you become divisive and say, I'm not prepared to work with this guy and I'm not prepared to work with that guy, or alternatively, I'll work with him, won't work with him, it becomes unpatriotic. And hence, it goes against our, our ethos of nation building. So, so, so our approach is very simple. We're not going to take any side Neither right, because let's be honest, the multi-party charter is right. We've got the Freedom Front Plus there. The left is the ANC, very socialist Marxist. We're taking a very independent approach, and that approach is how do we persuade? How do we reconcile? How do we nation build? What do we do? So in other words, I'll be working as a party with the left, because I know a lot of them, most of them, and I'll be working with the right. And what's the ideal? There's only one object, and that object is, what do we do for South Africans? Okay. And if that's going to be the guiding force, then there shouldn't be any division. Kenny Kunene? We've been very consistent that uh, we will work with any political party that understands our view on how we want to service our people. Uh, on, 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 on the view of how do we implement service delivery, on how do we fight corruption, on how do we transform this country. But uh, our, our number one is to win outright. Our number two is to have a coalition government that does not involve the ANC and the Democratic Alliance. If we can have a coalition of parties outside of the DA and the ANC, Sakina, we will see a different South Africa. And I'm saying this because we have worked with both the ANC and the DA in coalitions. And Michael will agree with me. In a coalition that we had with the DA, at Action SA and others, the problem was the DA. Uh, the coalition that we have now with the ANC, uh, especially in the city of Johannesburg, the problem is the ANC. 
So these two parties have to be out of power, out of coalition, and we find each other and work well together to build a South Africa that South Africans will be proud well, Michael's of. Michael's party has signed a pact here, so I'm not sure, but he has the opportunity. Each of you, 15 seconds, why should South Africans vote for your party? Action SA is the fastest growing uh, party in the political center of South Africa. We're growing in all nine provinces. We are diverse. We achieve genuine diversity at a grassroots level in Soweto getting 22%, in Santon getting 21%. We contested only six municipalities in 2021, and despite that, we're the sixth largest party in South Africa. We're now on the ballot paper for every South African in nine provinces. Samuel? Thank you. The, 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 the mantra, the mantra is not how big, the mantra is how good. So the mantra is not quality, the mantra is not quantity, the mantra is quality. We, we believe quality is the dynamic to capacitate the state we need to deal with oligopolies. Oligopolies meaning okay. not monopolies, but oligopolies, because that is what's going to bring money, disposable income to our people. Kenny Kunene. The president of Patriotic Alliance, Gaten McKenzie, has showed when he was the mayor of the Central Karoo that he's a decisive leader. He has brought businesses in the Central Karoo. He has given people who've never had flushing toilets for eight years. He has given them flushing toilets outside of government money. All right. We are, he has shown that decisive leadership. I, as the MMC of Transport, Time is up. am called pub, Papa Action because of the work I'm doing on the ground. So we are right. service delivery political Papa party. Action and uh, the rest of the gentlemen, thank you so much for your time this morning. That ends our third installment of discussions with new politi political parties contesting this year's elections. And of course, you will make up your mind.